According to the Nielsen ratings data, 5.019 million people saw me lose my mind. It happened on June 7th, 2004, on the set of Good Morning America. I was wearing my favorite new tie and a thick coating of makeup. My hair was overly coiffed and puffy. The bosses had asked me to fill in for my colleague, Robin Roberts, as the newsreader. The job basically entailed coming on and anchoring brief news updates at the top of each hour. I was sitting in Robin's spot at a small satellite anchor desk inside the second story of ABC's Glass and Case studio in New York's Times Square. On the other side of the room was the main anchor desk, home to the show's co-hosts, the avuncular Charles Gibson and the elegant Diane Sawyer. Charlie tossed it over to me. We're going to go now to Dan Harris, who's at the news desk. Dan? At this point, I was supposed to read a series of six voiceovers, short news items, about 20 seconds apiece, over which the control room would roll video clips. It started out fine. Good morning, Charlie and Diane. Thank you, I said in my best morning anchor voice, chipper yet authoritative. But then, right in the middle of the second voiceover, it hit. Out of nowhere, I felt like I was being stabbed in the brain with raw animal fear. A paralytic wave of panic rolled up through my shoulders over the top of my head, then melted down the front of my face. The universe was collapsing in on me. My heart started to gallop. My mouth dried up. My palms oozed sweat. I knew I had four more stories to read, an eternity with no break and no place to hide, no sound bites or pre-taped stories or field correspondence to toss to, which would have allowed me to regroup and catch my breath. As I began the third story about cholesterol drugs, I was starting to lose my ability to speak, gasping as I waged an internal battle against the wave of howling terror all of it compounded by the knowledge that the whole debacle was being beamed out live. You're on national television. This is happening now, right now. Everyone is seeing this, dude. Do something. Do something. I tried to fight through it with mixed results. The official transcript of the broadcast reflects my descent into incoherence. Researchers report people who take cholesterol-lowering drugs called statins for at least five years may also lower their risk of cancer, but it's too early to to prescribe statins slowly for cancer production. It was at this point, shortly after my reference to cancer production, with my face drained of blood and contorted with ticks, that I knew I had to come up with something drastic to get myself out of the situation. My on-air meltdown was the direct result of an extended run of mindlessness, a period of time during which I was focused on advancement and adventure to the detriment of pretty much everything else in my life. It began on March 13, 2000, my first day at ABC News. I was 28 years old, terrified and wearing an unfortunate double-breasted suit as I walked through the high-ceilinged entryway lined with pictures of such luminaries as Peter Jennings, Diane Sawyer and Barbara Walters, all now my colleagues apparently, then took the steep, stately escalator up into the mouth of the building on Manhattan's Upper West Side. They made me go to the basement that day to some fluorescent-lit security office to have my picture taken for my new identification card. In the photo, I looked so young that a colleague would later joke that a wider shot might reveal me to be holding a balloon. That I had made it to ABC at all seemed like a big misunderstanding or maybe a cruel joke. During the preceding seven years, as I toiled in local news, my dream had always been to get to the network, which was how people in the farm leagues referred to it. But I had assumed it wouldn't happen until I was maybe 40 and looked old enough to operate a motor vehicle. I had started in TV news straight out of college with the vague goal of pursuing a career that had a modicum of glitz and also did not require me to do any math. My parents were doctors, but I didn't have the aptitude or the attention span for med school. So, despite some initial misgivings on the part of my folks, I took a job at an NBC station in Bangor, Maine, one of the smallest television markets in the country, number 154 out of 210. The gig was part-time, paid five fifty an hour, and involved writing scripts for the anchor woman, then operating the studio camera during a broadcast called Alive at 5.30. On my first day, the producer who was assigned to train me wheeled around from his electric typewriter and matter-of-factly announced, this is not a glamorous job. 